I'm going to die. Time is running out for me and for my companions. My brothers of the river, who like me were born in these waters four years ago. Our lives are coming to an end after a long, dangerous journey. But we have made it to here, to the place where we first emerged into the world. The place we have chosen to die. Our beloved Alaska. It is a harsh, wild place. A land of dense forests and cold tundras, crossed by innumerable rivers that are born in the distant mountains of the interior and come to die here on these frozen coasts. We left these waters some time ago, when we were still young, and now we have returned to swim from the sea back up our rivers. An epic journey plagued with dangers, but that is part of our destiny, part of our greatness. In a land as harsh as this, which gives you no second chances, our arrival is the key to the continuity of life. Before we die, we will leave behind on the riverbed the seed of future generations of salmon. And at the end of our long journey, our old but nutritious bodies will serve as food for the large animals of this land, fattening them up, giving them the reserves they need to survive the terrible Arctic winter. Yes, I'm going to die. But allow me in these final minutes to tell you the story of our lives. Our odyssey in the distant land of the giant bears. In the far northwest of the American continent stretches a land some one and a half million square kilometers in size. Only 600,000 people inhabit this region where the frozen tundra, the coniferous forests, and the mountains dominate a landscape which in some places has never been trodden by man. It is an inhospitable region where life must make the maximum advantage of the few warm months after which the cold and the snow will once more take over the land. And nonetheless, such is the natural wealth of Alaska that over 50% of all the protected territory of the United States of America can be found here. Its waters are full of krill, the small crustaceans that forms the basic diet of many marine animals. Such a delicious feast that every summer the humpback whales travel over 3,000 miles from the warm waters of Hawaii in order to eat their fill. And only the cold forces them to return to the south. They are not the only summer visitors. In a land dominated by ice, few species can survive the hardships of winter. When the cold sets in, food becomes scarce, and hibernation or immigration are the only possible alternatives. The only thing that grows in the winter are the glaciers high up in the mountains. 
The snows feed the glacier valleys and their gigantic tongues of ice can advance a few more centimeters on their slow descent to the sea. For thousands of years, they were the real masters of Alaska. The entire land was covered in ice, allowing no life to enter its domains. Today, however, this supremacy has been challenged, and each spring the ice is once more defeated. Little by little, the surface of the land is covered in blocks of ice, which began their slow journey towards the sea over a thousand years ago. The start of the melt announces the resurgence of life in Alaska. At the feet of the giant, the seals doze in the sun before diving into the freezing cold waters in search of food. Nature forges her way ahead at the very gates of the titan of ice. From this time on, the land undergoes a rapid transformation. With the increase in temperature, the layer of snow that had covered the landscape shrinks back and the vegetation begins a race against the clock to complete its life cycle in the few available months. With the vegetation, food returns and the largest of Alaska's land carnivores, the grizzly bear, awakes from its winter sleep. Five months spent in the darkness in his den, five months of fasting, which are now coming to an end. For the first time in many months, precipitation falls in the form of rain, announcing the change of season and the new grown prairies fill with hungry bears. They have spent the winter breastfeeding their cubs while themselves observing a strict fast. Summer is short and it is essential to regain those lost kilos if they hope to survive another year. In Alaska, svelte figures don't last for long. The grizzly bear belongs to the same species as the European brown bear, but its better diet enables it to grow much bigger. A Pyrenean bear weighs around 300 kilos and stands two meters tall, while on Kodiak Island, some bears can weigh almost 1,000 kilos and measure three meters. The cubs remain with their mother for three years, after which their life of solitude begins. From that time on, they will receive neither protection nor help, and the companions they had played with up to now will become their rivals. The 
grizzlies are solitary animals and at the start of spring, hunger makes them even more dangerous. So when an adult male approaches a group of young bears, they know it's time to stop the games and make a rapid getaway. In times of hunger, the adult bears are capable of killing and eating young of their own species, so it's probably best to take no chances. The climate has also determined the vegetation of Alaska. Wherever temperatures permit, the land is covered with coniferous forest. Their small leaves, the needles, are not shed in the winter, which permits them to take advantage of the warmer months from the very first day. And this they do so effectively, they block out almost all the light. Except for the moss that covers the forest floor, few plants are capable of living in their shade. Trees with deciduous leaves, less well adapted to the cold, have to take refuge along the shores of the rivers and in the more protected areas, and that is where the large herbivores go in search of them. The spring brings fresh vegetation, an irresistible feast for any moose. Like the bears, they are solitary animals. The only groups outside the mating season are mothers with the young, and these are precisely the most dangerous because the mother will allow no one, not even one of her own species, to get close to her young. An absent-minded moose has come to drink at the same pool, unaware of her presence. The calf doesn't seem to mind the intruder, but its mother does not exactly welcome visitors and it's not long before she approaches the stranger to make her position clear. There have been cases of female moose killing people who got too close to her young. In a land of bears and wolves, the most dangerous animals of all are, paradoxically, the moose. The unwitting intruder knows this and moves off in search of quieter pastures. No one, not even the large males, would dare challenge a mother, and even less for a bit of water or a few willow leaves.